Okay, so the first formula on the screen, it involves the Vandermond determinant, which is uh, described in green at the bottom of the page. And uh, it states that the number of uh, young tableaus of a, of a given shape, N1, N2, Nm, can be written as a, as a ratio of a certain Vandermond determinant, the product of the factorials of these entries uh, times n factorial. And the same number of, uh, of young tableaus of, uh, of the shape n1, n2, nm actually um, can be written as a, as a ratio between n factorial and the product of, uh, of the hood lengths. Now, this, the first formula was due to Frobenius in the 1900s. The second formula, I think, was proved around 1950s or so. So let's see some, uh, some simple applications of the, of the hook length, uh, length formula, some ac simple examples. So let's say um, n equals four, and we're looking at the shape of this form. Now, if we write the, uh, we can write the possible tableaus that we have for this. Uh, so you can have one, two, three, and four. We can have one, two, four, and three. And then we can do one, three, four, and two. I think these are all of, uh, of this shape. So when equals four and the shape is three, one. So it looks like F three, one is three. Now, what does the, the hook length formula give? So I will just write, uh, draw the shape here and I will write inside it the hook lengths. Um, let me give it a different color. So this is one, this is two, this is four, and this is one. And so from the hook length formula, we get uh, uh, n is four, so it's four factorial divided by th uh, uh, divided by four times two, and this equals three. So it's correct. I'll leave it to you to do the uh, this shape, which is corresponding to two one one. Uh, so use hook length formula for that one. Uh, let me give you uh, two more examples. Um, say something bigger this shape where we have four four that is f four four so if we use again the the hook length uh, formula so we have uh, n is eight so it's a factorial and we write the hook length here this is one this is two this is three this is two this is three four you have a five and a four and so it will be five times four times four times three times three times two times two. So the top has the a factorial. So let's just write that as a times seven times six times two. And now we can start to simplifying things. Five goes there, eight is killed by a two and a four. Um, so four goes with this four, the three goes with the three, the two goes with the two. There's another uh, three here that this goes with the, the six and we get the number 14. Okay, so there are 14 um, such uh, young tableaus. So any other shapes you can you can apply the formula in a in a similar fashion. Um, let me give you one try it at home. This one three three three. Calculate it. I think I got forty two, but you should check it at home as well. And uh, some maybe this one. Is uh, five and five. I think it's also forty two. Okay. 
Now, let me switch to a different topic. It involves uh, also counting, but uh, we'll replace uh, sets by, uh, by subspaces. So we'll talk about uh, what are called uh, Gaussian coefficients. Of Gaussian numbers. We'll see in a second. They could also be called polynomials. So what we'll do here, uh, we'll do a different type of counting, a Q counting. So we'll count instead of sets and so on, we'll count subspaces. So to do that, let me, I need some notation. So um, for N a natural number and Q, let's say can be any real number. I'm gonna define the following quantity N square brackets with a Q after it by definition, this equals this sum of the following geometric progression with ratio Q. So it's one plus Q plus Q to the N minus one. So it has uh, N terms in it. And this equals N clearly if uh, this is, I guess, um, this was equal N if Q equals one and it's Q to the N minus one divided by Q minus one if Q is not one. Now, we have this, uh, this definition and with it, we're gonna define a generalization of the factorial. So we have zero Q factorial is by definition one. And then for N, a natural number, we define the, this NQ factorial as recursively as NQ times N minus one Q factorial. And it's not too difficult to show if you use this definition that this factorial, let me write it, write it nicer, equals the following. So this is when, um, well, let's do it in two cases. It will be the usual n factorial if q equals one. And otherwise it will be something of the form qn divided by q minus one times qn minus one divided by q minus one times all the way to the last one, which is q minus one over q minus one, if q is not equal to one. Okay, so these numbers will, will play an important role in, in the things that we'll be counting in, in a little bit. So what are we gonna count? Another definition. Um, now I'll take Q to be a prime power And by FQ, I will denote the finite field with the Q elements. So as we mentioned in a previous lecture, when Q is a prime, this is the same as the integers module of that prime. But when Q is not a prime and it's a prime power, like uh, four, eight, nine, and so on, uh, FQ can be a, is not the same thing as, uh, as the integers module of that number. Now, another definition, the quantity that is of interest for us, is gonna be the following, is this uh, uh, Q binomial coefficient, N choose K with a Q. This is the number of K subspaces in FQN. FQN is a vector space of dimension N over, over FQ. All right. So now what I'll try to do is to show you a parallel between the counting that happens in the case of sets and the counting that happens in the set of, uh, of subspaces. So I'll, I'll try to split it down here to the middle. So on one side, we will have uh, uh, see, on one side we'll have uh, subsets and then on the other side, we'll have uh, subspaces. Okay. So first I need some, uh, some definitions. So, um, so again, in subsets, we, are, we live in the, in this, inside this set N, the natural numbers one to all the way up to N. And I'm gonna define a notion of a chain. A chain is just a collection of subsets that are nested inside each other. So A1 is a proper subset of A2, is a proper subset of AL, and uh, this AL 
is inside inside the set n. Okay, that's what a chain is. Now that I also have to define the notion of a maximal chain. So a maximal chain is um, a chain that cannot be extended. We cannot add any any other sets to it to make it into a into another chain. So we start with a zero, which is the empty set, and then we have a one again. Is, automatically is a subset of one element and then you have a2 subset of two elements that contains a1 until a n which equals the the set n now the first uh, result proposition gives us a formula for the number of chain the maximal chains and it says that the number of maximal chains is n factorial. And this is probably not so surprising. Uh, let's give a quick proof here. So when you have one of these maximal chains, we're gonna construct a, a bijection between the maximal chains and the permutation of the set one to n as follows. Uh, so bijection, if we have such a zero, a one, a n, uh, maximal chain, then for every j between 1 and n, when we look at the set aj, it properly contains aj minus 1, so it, it's obtained from aj minus 1 by adding exactly one element, and we're going to give that element a name, we are going to call it, let's say, xj. So xj is the element that aj has, but aj minus 1 doesn't. And uh, we'll define a permutation sigma from the set of uh, an, an elements and elements where we define sigma j as being xj. And I claim that this is a correspondence between the maximal chains and the set of all permutations on an element, uh, which we know there are n factorial of them. So to see this example on a, on a specific set, so let's say if I have n equals three, and my chain is, for example, two, uh, I skipped the empty set. So two is contained in two, three, is contained in the set two, three, one. Then the permutation that is associated to this, uh, to this maximal chain will have one, two, three. Now one is the element two that the set A1 has and the set A0 doesn't. And then which one comes next is three. So we put a three here and the next one is one, okay. So that's, uh, I think it's pretty, pretty clear. Now what happens for subspaces? Now for subspaces, the place of the set with an element is taken by FQN, which is a vector space of dimension N over FQ. And now we can define the similar notion to that one of chain for sets, a chain in this situation We'll have a, um, a collection of subspaces that are uh, properly nested into each other. So U1, U2, UL are not subsets, they're subspaces. And uh, we don't have any requirement on, the, on their dimension, it's just that uh, uh, U1 is a proper subspace of U2, which is a proper subspace of uh, U3 and so on. And then we have the notion of a maximal chain. And in this situation, we we take uh, similarly to the situation for the uh, sets, the U0 will be the zero subspace. Now U1 will be a one dimensional subspace. U2 will be a two dimensional subspace that contains uh, U1 and UN will be the big the whole uh, space. So in this situation, similar to what we had before, so before we had something that uh, um, that was very useful to us actually, that the cardinality of aj is j, here that gets replaced by dimension. So the dimension of uj over fq equals j, okay? 
And now, um, okay, so I'm trying to look at these two things in parallel. The proposition is, okay, we know what happens for sets. What happened for subspaces? What's a number? Of maximal uh, chains of subspaces. of FQN is, is what? Well, it turns out that it's going to be this NQ factorial. So I'll give you a, a sketch of a proof. But before I give you that, um, let me show you another way of looking at the proof in the case of sets. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to erase this uh, example here. And that one is, when we do the counting from, in the case of, uh, of sets, we have here the empty set. Uh, then we have at the next level, we have singletons like one, two, three. And then at the next set we, uh, level, we have uh, subsets with two elements. So this is what is called a post set representation as a partial order set. And on the top, we have the whole set. So it's the same uh, example as before, n equals uh, three. Now, in this representation, we put an edge if uh, one set is contained in the other, and it's obtained by the, the set on the top is obtained from the, the one at the bottom by adding one, one element. So you have the situation, and then uh, one, three between uh, uh, two, one, and three, and one, two here, and all of them there. Now, in this situation, when we count this, uh, the number of maximal chains, one way of looking at it is starting at the bottom and how many choices we have going up. Well, uh, if you are in a set with n elements, you are going to have n choices. So n choices to pick one set here. And then once we pick this set, how many choices do we have to go up? So this is gonna be our chain. Well, in this situation, you have two, but in general, you, we are going to have n minus one choices to go up and so on. So in this situation, you go to two, three, and then you have one more choice, but this goes all the way to two and one. So that gives the same formula with n factory. So that's something similar that we are going to do here. So this is the proof that will, uh, uh, we can mimic the other proof as well. And I leave that as an exercise for you, but this proof with counting the number of go ways going up is perhaps uh, simpler. So um, if you think about in terms of, uh, of, uh, of the pose set, here you have the zero dimensional vector space, vector subspace, and then here you have everything that has dimension one, and then you go up, and here you have things of dimension two, and in general you, are, you can reach to, you know, this collection of subspaces are not gonna have the same uh, cardinalities, but you have, we reach at the, uh, you know, number of, uh, uh, we reach to the subspace of dimension J and we're counting how many ways can I go up to the dimension uh, J plus one, okay? So you go try to go up like this, find the number of choices and then we try to find the number of choices going up, okay? Now, in how many ways, for example, let's see the first step, how many ways you can pick this uh, U1? Well, U1 is a one dimensional subspace and therefore it has a basis which is formed by one uh, non-zero vector. How many non-zero vectors you have? We have Q to the N minus one non-zero vectors. And uh, any mo if you take a non-zero vector, you can uh, you generate some one dimensional subspace, but so do any of the Q minus one non-zero multiples of that of that vector. So you have to divide the number of non-zero vectors uh, by Q minus one to get the number of one dimensional subspaces. So that's how many choices you have at the first level. So this is kind of similar to the N that we had in the case of a set. Now, when we go to the, let's say we, we reach to the level uh, UJ and we're trying to pick UJ plus one, well, when we are at UJ, UJ is a, is a subspace of dimension J. So we're trying to see how many ways, how many uh, subspaces um, 
of dimension j plus one contain it. Well, there are qn vectors in total, and q uh, uj contains q to the j of them. So we have q to the n minus q to the j vectors that lives outside uj. Okay, and we can pick one of these vectors, and um, you know that because that vector is outside our our subspace uj, when we when we uh, Add it to uj and take the span of everything we are going to get a, a subspace of dimension j plus one but we're over counting because any subspace of um, a subspace of dimension j plus one will arise in q to the j plus one minus q to the j ways in, uh, in 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 this form so the multiplication the number of choices here which when we go from from size j to size j plus one uh, which which would be something like uh, uh, n minus n minus j uh, ch uh, choices. In this situation, we get something like this uh, this ratio of um, of polynomials in Q. So at the top, we essentially are going to have only one choice. So it will be Q to the n um, minus Q to the n minus one divided by Q to the n minus Q to the n minus one. And so I'll write it on the next uh, page. So I'll keep this through the middle and uh, subsets and subspaces. And so then the number that we get here for the number of, uh, of subspaces like we, we had q to the n minus one, q minus one at the first step, and uh, q to the n minus q divided by q squared minus q at the second step. So this is choices for u1, choices for u2, and then choices for uj plus one, q to the n minus qj, q to the j plus one minus qj, and so on. So the last one is one. And when we uh, calculate this, what do we what do we end up with? Well, each of these factors, you see, the the u two factor has a q factor there that can um, uh, both the top and the bottom can be simplified by the same for u j plus one and so on. So we get two to the n minus one q minus one times q to the n minus one q minus one. Here we get two q to the n minus j minus one, q minus one, and so on to the one. And when you, this expression here, it's exactly the n q factor. Okay. Now, so that gives us the number of, um, of these chains. Okay, so what? Well, what I try to get you to is to give another proof of the, so, in the subset case, we have this parameter n choose k, and we showed a couple of formulas for it, but uh, this is the one that is uh, most people are familiar with, and it's the easiest one to remember. So we can actually deduce this formula using this uh, machinery with chains and so on. And how would you do that? Well, again, we look at this, uh, this, uh, partial order set or on the top we put the set and then we put here the sets of size and minus one and go down and at the bottom we put empty set and then here you know size one so on. now somewhere here we have the ones that have size k and those are the ones that we're trying to count okay and so are we going to count them we're going to do a double count and we are we will count pairs of the form k and c where k is a subset of n of cardinality k these are the things that we're trying to count and c is a chain is a maximal chain actually such that k is an element of it okay so if we do the count uh using the first element well we pick an element k here okay how many ways can we do that well n choose k 
Okay. And and now, what uh, what are we trying to do? We're trying to we are trying to count. So we have this k fixed here, and we're trying to count how many how many chains uh, go through. You know, start from here, end up at k, and then go all the way up. Well, the number of a chain that goes from the empty set to k is going to be a, a maximal chain of a, of a k subset. So the number of of the the cardinality of the first part. Um, let me use a different color here. So we have the k there, and you can choose it and choose k ways, and. Um, Let's say we go from here to here in a green way. And so the number of, uh, of, of the chains that go from the empty set all the way to the K over there, that's going to be K factorial. And now we are trying to, we have to count in how many ways um, can we go from K all the way up to the, to the end set, but the number of, of, uh, of this pin connection is going to be n minus k factorial because that would be a maximal chain uh, in a, in a set with n minus k elements. Now all these things, all these products equal what? Well, we can do the count starting with this with a with a chain first. Well, we pick one chain. How many traces we have for it? N factorial. And how many choices do we have to for for the place where the chain? meets this uh, family of k subsets, well, we have exactly one choice because the intersection between a chain and the family of k subsets can only have um, a, a, a one element at most, it cannot have two. Actually, the collection of k subsets is, is, uh, is an example of what is called an anti-chain, but don't worry about it for now. So anyway, this uh, argument gives us this uh, gives another proof of the binomial coefficient n choose k as being the product of n factorial times k factorial and minus k factorial. Now, what happens in the in the case of uh, of subspaces? Well, we can mimic uh, this proof, and we will get uh, a similar result that the number of uh, k subspaces of uh, of a uh, vector space of dimension n equals the q factorial of n divided by the product of uh, k factorial times n minus k uh, q factorial. And the proof is, is very similar. It's essentially the same picture as, uh, as, as on the left. On the top, we have uh, the, the big space of dimension n. At the bottom, you have the zero subspace of dimension zero. And let's say somewhere here, we have the ones that have dimension k. And we count a similar uh, thing of uh, pairs of k and c, where k is a subspace of, of fq and of dimension, dimension of k is k. And c is a maximum chain of subspaces this time, such that k is, is an element of c. And a similar count gives us, so for the, uh, we first pick a K here. Well, how many choices do we have for that? Uh, maybe I'll squeeze it in here. That will be the parameter that we're trying to count and choose K, um, the, the Q binomial coefficient. And then, okay, uh, how many chains do we have that contain it? Well, we have to, start from the zero subspace all the way to, to k, and that can be done in k factorial ways. And then we have to go from k all the way to fqn, and that can be done in n minus k q factorial ways. Okay, but uh, if we do now the count by starting with the, with the, with the chain first, we can pick a, a chain, and we have n factorial ways to do that. And then once we pick the chain, the intersection of that chain with the, with the set of k-dimensional subspaces has cardinality one. It's only one, one subspace there. And therefore we get, uh, we get the similar formula as before. So here the, the, 
the idea of the proof is similar for, for both the sets and the, and the subspaces uh, case. Okay, now, so let's write, um, so what we just proved is that this expression equals what? Well, it's this n factorial divided by this product of these two factorials. And it can be rewritten as follows. So we'll, we'll simplify it. Here we have q to the n minus one. So here I'm in the situation that q is not one. So q is a prime power. So you have q to the n minus one, minus one divided by q, all the way to, the, let me write the last two, q squared minus one, q minus one times q minus one times q minus one. So I put the, add the last factor just so that I remember you have n factors on the, in the first, uh, in the fa n factorial. And then we have, uh, let me do the uh, colors before. As before, we have q to the k minus one, q minus one, uh, q to the k minus one, minus one, q minus one. Here you have q minus one times q minus one times, and the other one, what color do we use? Pink. We do q to the n minus k minus one, q minus one. Uh, all the way to q minus one, q minus one. So he, uh, here, remember, n minus k factors, k factors on the top. Uh, I won't mess it up, but it, there are uh, n factors. And you can simplify things a little bit. Uh, so we can get rid of the of the green. Uh, part or the pink part, whichever one you prefer. But if we get rid of the, of the pink part and the Q minus ones at the uh, denominators, we are left with what? We're left with QN minus one times QN minus one, minus one, all the way to QN minus K plus one minus one divided by QK minus one, QK uh, minus one minus one, all the way to Q minus one. So an easy way to remember here is that we have k factors. And actually, this expression on the bottom is actually, you know, k q factorial. And on the top, uh, what do we have? We have the analogous of the falling factorial. We also have k factors. And you have the powers of qn from which you, uh, you know, you, the decreasing powers of, uh, of q starting with qn from which you, you, you subtract one as you go down. So that's, uh, uh, again, that's an, maybe, a, again, another uh, similarity between the two, the two formulas. So you can remember this qn minus one, qn minus one, minus one, all the way of qn minus k plus one minus one divided by qk. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, let's look a little bit closer at this formula. Okay, so um, let me write it again here. Now this number is a natural number because it, it I mean, in general, when n is uh, greater or equal to k, this counts something. It's a number of, uh, of uh, uh, subspaces. And let's see some, so what happens in general that is that this expression is actually a polynomial in Q and it can be written, so proposition, Uh, this parameter and k equals summation from l equal to zero to k times n minus k of a l times q to the l. So it's a polynomial of degree k times n minus k in, in q, where actually a l has a meaning is actually the number of partitions Oh, 
of L whose Ferrer's diagram diagram uh, diagram fits in a box of dimension k times n minus k. So this is a perhaps unexpected connection between this, uh, this is so Gaussian coefficient. So this n choose k, uh, it's sometimes called q by anomial coefficient, or like I said, Gaussian coefficients or Gaussian numbers. And it's actually a polynomial in, uh, in q uh, where the coefficients count the number of partitions of, uh, of the index L with, uh, with this constraint that this uh, diagram fits in a, in a box K times N minus K. Now, I didn't mention before, but um, so the Ferrer's diagram is a graphical way of uh, representing a partition where we use dots. So this is uh, you know, the partition of uh, seven, S3 plus two plus two and the uh, Young diagram is the, the representation using boxes. I mean, in this situation, the dots will be useful. We'll see in a second, but in general, you can do more with the Young diagram. A young diagram, you can make it into a Young tableau by, by filling it up the squares with, uh, with numbers, okay? So what I'll try to do now is to, to explain to you this, uh, this result, to, to prove this uh, result for the rest of the lecture. Okay. So again, the result is that this parameter equals summation from L equals zero. of L K times N minus K box. Okay. So before we do uh, this example, um, let's do some, um, so I'll give you the general idea of the proof. And then I will I will show you the the idea of a proof uh, based on a, on a on a given example. So the the, the key thing here is that uh, we interpret this n choose k uh, uh, combinator. Uh, so from its definition, this is what this is the number of k subsets, k, k subspaces. Sorry, of f q n. Now, a K subspace of FQN, you can represent it as, it's, it's the same thing as uh, thinking of it as a K by N matrix. So you take a basis. Um, so you can, uh, you can think of it as a, as a K by N matrix where the rank of the matrix is uh, is k, but now here you have to be a little bit careful because uh, the same k subspace may have uh, multiple. You could permute them. You know, you can permute the the elements of a basis into a matrix as the rows, and you could get uh, you know different matrices that correspond to it. But what we actually are going to focus on. For each such, a, for um, whenever you have a, a matrix that has this property that the rank is k, uh, we can uh, bring it to a row reduced echelon form, which is going to be unique. So what we're, do, we're doing is we're doing uh, we're going to count these k subspaces by counting the number of row reduced echelon form matrices, which have k rows, n. Uh, columns and they have rank equals to k. Now, what is a row reduce uh, echelon form matrix? What property does it have? Well, I'll list them here. So, 
you remember from linear algebra, um, you have that the first non-zero entry in each row must be a one. And this is usually called a leading one, leading one. The second property, so let me put one, two. The entries above a leading one must be zero. And the third property is that the leading one in a certain row i is further to the right right of the leading one in row i minus one okay so you kind of have this uh the leading ones as you start from the first uh, uh first row they move to the move, move to the right okay so this is the strategy of the proof what we want to count uh we are counting we are, and choose k will equal the number of k subspaces equals the number of k subspace and this will be equals the number of these k uh row reduce echelon four matrices in which you have uh, k rows and columns entries from the finite field fq and the rank is k. Okay, so let me give you a, now an example to see uh, what I mean. I think I have an example here. So I have, let's say n equals five, k equals two. So clearly here I have five choose two q. And if I write the formula with the falling factorial is q to the five minus one times q to the four minus one divided by q squared minus one divided by q minus one. And uh, q to the four minus one with q squared minus one uh, give me a q squared plus one. And q to the five minus one divided by q minus one gives me q to the four plus q q plus q squared plus q plus one. So when we do the calculation, we get what? We get a q six in one way we get a Q5 only in one way. A Q4 appears in two ways. A Q cubed appears in two ways. A Q square also in two ways, and then plus a Q plus one, okay? So the claim is that the coefficients of, uh, so in this situation you see N is five, K is two, so K times N minus K is the same thing as a box two times three, and uh, which is six. And you see the coefficient, the largest coefficient is Q to the six. And the claim is that these coefficients of the powers of Q count something in terms of, uh, of these fairer diagrams. So let's, this is from the perspective of, of our left-hand side of this N choose, N choose K. Um, Let's see what happens from the perspective of the right hand side in terms of these uh, row reduce um, echelon forms. Okay, so we have, I'm sorry, how, do, how are they gonna, uh, going to look like? Well, we have two rows and five columns. So one possible way would be you have a one here and you have a zero below it. And the next leading one comes right after a zero and a one. And then you have no restriction. So I'm going to put dots here. So this is an example of one um, uh, row reduced economic form. Now, what are, uh, what is another one? Well, let's keep the first leading one here, one zero. And then we move a bit to the, uh, you know, the zero one here. And we have a zero here. And then you have uh, five entries that could be anything. And then we go on like this. So we keep this one here, one zero, and then we move the zero one here. And the last one, one zero, 
the zero one makes it all the way to the end, zero, 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 and you have dots there. So there are some other ones. So that we're done with the one zero in the first column, and now zero, zero, can be one zero here, can be zero one right after, and you have four dots there, zero, zero, one, zero, can you have the zero one here? Zero, one, zero, and then zero, one at the end. And now, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. And the dots there. And I think there are two more. Um, zero, 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 zero. Okay. One, zero. Zero one zero here and the last one all right so anyway so these are the the ten row reduce echelon forms okay so these n choose uh, five choose two that we have here will equal the number of these matrices and now what do we notice well here, let's let's pick the first matrix here. How many such matrices are we going to have? Well, the dots, they they can be any uh, any elements of uh, of the finite field. So that you have Q ways for each of them, but you have six dots, so that they're going to be Q to the six. And you see that the partition is actually given. So for that uh, uh, for that six, we have this partition of uh, if we look at the dots that you see there, you have the partition of, of six into that fits inside a box of size two and three. Now what happens to the next one? So if we look at the next one here, this one has uh, five dots. So we have Q to the five side matrices and the partition corresponding to them, you just uh, take the, the dots that we see there and we, uh, put them together so you will have this this partition here uh, you know in 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 a slightly different form than we uh, you know you can just uh, flip it and you bring it or rotate uh, you know rotate um, reflect it um, so you get the the form that we want of a, of a, of a ferrous diagram similarly here here we have four dots so the number of such matrices is q4 and if we look at uh, what we get, we get this partition. And then this one here, we have three dots. So yeah, that's a Q cube. And the partition that corresponds to it is just a one and a three, the, the three ones, or it's the a one, three. And then so on, you see the pattern. So the next one will be here. We get a, another Q to the four and the partition is Two, two, and then you get a Q cubed, uh, and then uh, a Q. Uh, which one? What do you get here? So we have, yeah, here you get another Q square here. Yeah, and so on. So that's how it works on this example and it agrees so the count from uh, from these row reduced echelon forms agrees to what happens on the top here now what's the general idea so here's how you can formalize this into a proof so when we look at this uh, row reduced echelon form we have k rows and we have n columns we keep track of where the leading ones are. So C1 is the column where the, so in general CJ will be the column uh, containing the leading one in row J. And now because of the definition of uh, row reduced echelon forms, this C has to be increasing. So C1 is less than C2, which has the one here. And all the way here where you have the CK, which is which has the one here. Okay. And now 
how many uh, so we have this uh, c1 less than c2 less than ck this is less than or equal to n greater or equal to one now how many dots are going to be on the first on the first row so the, here you have zeros before c1 and so after c1 so how many dots on the first row dots first row after so up to c up to column c1 we see no dots so that's going to be n minus c1 n minus c1 is the number of uh, of columns from here to here that's n minus c1 and then we will have these columns that will have a zero in it. So this one will have a zero, this one will have a zero and so on. There will be K minus one columns that come from the other leading ones. So we have to subtract minus K minus one. And similarly in the second row, we do a similar count. You do N minus C2 minus K minus two. And you can go to K minus one, K minus N row. We will get N minus, uh, ck minus one and you subtract one for the for the ck column and the kth row you get n minus ck and it's not uh, too difficult to show that these uh, these values are decreasing so n minus c1 minus k minus one is going to be bigger than n minus c2 minus k minus two bigger than n minus ck minus one minus one bigger than n minus ck so these are the the elements of our partition, and the they these elements. I mean, we can, let me rewrite them here in n minus k plus one minus c one bigger than n minus k plus two minus c two bigger than n minus one minus c k minus one bigger than uh, n minus c k. So these all these values together, this they you write l for their sum. And that's how uh, you, you, we, uh, we get the count because in this situation, um, the number of choices for the dots, you will be a Q choice for each dot. So you get Q to the L and uh, you know, the, um, the different matrices that we, different uh, partitions that, that come up from, from this uh, row reduced secular form, they add up to this number AL of uh, partitions that have that fit into the box of cardinality uh, what, uh, uh, k rows and you get k rows because we have k numbers here and it's easy to see that each of these numbers these large the largest number of them is going to be less than or equal than n minus k it's min n minus k minus c1 minus 1 but c1 minus 1 is non-negative so that's that's the proof now I'll leave it to you to figure out that from this result, um, if you take uh, Q equals one, it gives us that uh, the number of Ferris diagrams that can fit inside K, uh, inside the, the box K uh, of K rows and N minus K columns is going to be N choose K. And I'll stop here. <laughs>